All right. So it's been a little while since I've kind of gone over my setup here. So what I'd like to do is uh, kind of start at the ground up and show you my complete setup. Wheels, bearings, frames, boots, liners, laces, pants, everything, all the way from the ground up. So starting, of course, with the skate and the wheels. Now, the wheel is that Seba 82A 100mm wheel, my favorite wheel I've ever used at this point. And the reason I like it is the feel. You can see small core, lots of rubber, it's soft, um, rolls really smooth. Not necessarily a high performance wheel as in it's not going to roll super fast, but um, it's just so smooth. Absorbs the shock so well. Nice for like jumping around a little bit, taking the ups and downs along the way. Set the storm bearings, right? To me there's no other choice. Um, not waterproof, I almost said waterproof. Rust proof bearing. So, of course, water and contamination is going to get inside there, but the bearing itself isn't going to corrode and wear away, so you can always pull it apart, clean it up. It cleans up just like a new, really cool rubber shield with a uh, nylon spacer that holds the bearings in place, the seven ball bearing design, rust-proof materials. Lasts forever, right? I've rolled through all kinds of grit and grime, and these things are super smooth still, and they haven't been serviced. I don't think they have ever serviced these ones yet. Eventually I will, but right now, no need. They're lasting really well. Okay, so wheel, bearing, and now the frame. So this is the Natural Rocker 100, right? The Wizard 100 millimeter frame. Really fun thing. The nice thing I like about this frame, of course, the technical aspects of it, we'll talk about those, but the frame, as you can see, is solid aluminum, right? There's no windows cut out here. Now, that increases the weight of the frame, but the one thing I really like about it is how silent and quiet it is. So being a solid aluminum frame like this, it gives you a really cool sound. You know, definitely good if you were uh, maybe a ninja, right? A good for ninja skaters out there. <laughs> you need to sneak up on somebody. Pretty silent. And then you combine that with a nice bearing and a nice soft wheel. Yeah, it makes it for a really smooth, quiet ride. Really enjoy that. Now, I'm going to slide this over and just bring our frame out here. Now the wizard frame. What makes this so special is the design. It's a UFS frame. Now, here's the front. There we go. Good thing Leon printed that on there for me. You can see that this frame is angled a little bit forward here, right? Now, naturally, when you're skating, you're always in a more efficient position when your heels are raised up. And most skates, the boot is built that way. But in this case, the frame is built that way. So this is leaning you a little bit forward. And then along with that, there's kind of a natural rocker design here, which allows you to kind of pivot on this third wheel. If I bring my skate back. Now, if I find the right spot here, I can almost pivot right on this wheel. So hard to see from this angle here, but the idea is that if I'm centering my weight here with a proper ready position. Now the frame will kind of swing in an arc on that position there. So naturally rockers this way, naturally rockers this way. Really, really cool. Then up what I've got here is a Seba a sole plate, one piece sole that I've actually mounted into the boot here. So the frame mounted into the boot, the sole plate mounted into the boot, as opposed to having, can we see that there? Um, having the sole plate um, right against the boot and then the frame to the sole plate. I much prefer having the frame directly on the boot. See it there? Yeah, so all I'm trying to show is that this sole plate is on the boot, uh, the frame is on the boot, right? I don't have that sole plate sandwiched in between, which really affects the performance in my opinion. So this bolted on, sole plate there, which is nice. I slimmed it down so that way uh, it would never catch, right? before I would naturally bottom out. So sole plate's not in the way and it gives me a grinding option, which I think is pretty cool. Then moving on, laces and liners. So the liner, by now you've heard of this Intuition liner, by far the best liner that's in the market. Intuition makes the best liners. It's their foam, their whole process. A lot goes into it. It's a really good design, but it's comfortable, low volume, allows you to fit into like a nice small skate, have really good control. And there's some structure to the liner as well, so it's actually going to give you some support. And then, 
laces. We talk so much about laces, but a good waxed Canadian hockey lace to cinch everything up. And a nice hockey lace allows you to lace the skate up to the most comfortable for your foot. So it can be tighter in some spots, looser in other spots. There's lots of lacing setups. We've talked about those in other videos, so check those ones out. There's a lot to learn there, but nothing beats a waxed hockey Canadian lace. And socks now, Lorpin, right? Lorpin, um, the Cool Max liner, outdoor mountaineering sock. Um, and this is the blue version, which is limited edition. We have these in stock at most of our shops now. And uh, it's very similar if you had any other of the Lorpin socks, but I feel like it's maybe got a little extra material around the forefoot. Um, I'm not quite sure what makes it a little bit different, but I really, really prefer these blue ones. So if you see a set in your local skate shop, pick a pair of those up. Um, and of course, between the liner underneath, maybe I'll pull this apart. Because uh, I do this a little differently than other people. So remove my liner and I'll grab my insole. So instead of having the uh, insole inside the liner right against my foot, I have my insole underneath. So what that allows me is this liner has really nice shock absorption here, right? So I still have that cushion, but then I have the structure of the insole underneath. Really cool. That's how the best results I've had set up that way. Okay, so moving my way up now, let's move on to knee pads. Falling in love with these G-Form knee pads. Um, you know, sometimes wearing pads is a pain in the butt because they're not comfortable and you don't feel like wearing them. They inhibit your movement. But a pair of G-Forms absolutely does not inhibit your movement. You hardly know you have them on. Um, you know, the foam is really soft, especially once you've had them on for a few minutes. Your body temperature will like warm up this foam and it gets even more pliable than it is right here. And of course, upon impact, it hardens up, provides you that impact protection. What I like to do is, you know, generally for skating around, I have it on my knee. If I'm doing tricks or any of this sort of thing, grinding especially, I'll slide it down so it's covering my shin, right? Because nothing hurts worse than banging right on that shin bone. So I use it for both purposes. Slide it up on my knee, right? My knees are protected. If I feel like I'm more worried about my shins, I'll slide it down than I have my shins protected. No. Moving up next, my choice is always to wear something very removable, nice and light. So here I have my holiday tights, right? Wear those holiday tights. Feels like you have nothing on, but it's giving me some warmth. We had a fairly mild uh, winter so far here in Calgary. Really long fall, which is quite nice. So this was perfect for getting around outside for a, a nice crisp skate. Keep you warm, but you feel like you were still wearing nothing. But they can be a little revealing, you could imagine. <laughs> so over top of those, a pair of shorts. Now these aren't just any pair of shorts. These are... Leon Basson's design. Um, so, fairly simple as far as the design, right? Nothing too different there. It's a pair of shorts. But what I really like about it is it's that soft, stretchy denim. So, it's going to give me some protection. If I wipe out, I'm going to be able to slide out. I'm not going to wear holes through the pockets right away, any of that sort of thing. It's giving me protection. Um, but again, because it's that nice, light, stretchy denim, no, you know, it doesn't inhibit my movement at all, which is really cool. So we've got my tights, my knee pads, my shorts. I'll have to put these all on afterwards so you can see what I look like. And First then, layer. Oh, it might be a t-shirt if it's cold enough out. But generally speaking, I got just kind of a long sleeve hoodie made out of like a t-shirt material. Now what I really like about this is the hood itself, um, when it's over my head, it's not getting into my peripheral vision. It stays nice and tight. It's a thin material, stays close to my face. Of course, I can cinch it up, but the idea is that when I'm looking side to side or if I'm skating backwards looking over my shoulder, um, this isn't getting in my field of vision, which is really annoying. But then I can still wear a hood, have a little bit of warmth, keep my ears warm. Um, and then over top, I've got a biking jacket. So a windproof, waterproof jacket. It's gonna keep out the cold. It's got uh, like waterproof zippers and some nice pockets um, and some reflective 
uh, badging on it as well. So skating around traffic, it never hurts to have some reflective badging on there. And then moving up from there, oh, maybe not quite all the way up yet. Now gloves, right? Nothing is worse than slapping your hands on cold pavement if you're out for a skate. So for again, for that fall skating, my preference is to wear a glove. And what I've got here are the triple eight uh, slider gloves. It's a long boarding glove with a removable, um, I'm quite sure what kind of plastic this is. Similar to UHMW plastic, but a nice hard, long lasting plastic puck that can Velcro onto the glove. Kevlar tips on the fingers so you can drag those on the pavement. They're not going to wear out really fast, but it's a warm, comfortable glove. Going to protect your hands and then you have that option of, of course, having that on there. You know, depending what I'm doing, if I'm using my hands for something and I want to have some grip, then cool. Just wear the glove itself. Still going to give me lots of protection or for honestly for wiping out and sliding out. You know, I've used these um, at the skate park, skating big ramps and stuff. You know, when I'm sliding out, I can put my hand down and I can really lean on that puck and it's going to slide and offer me some good protection. So big fan of those. And then up to the top, you've got to wear your helmet. So I've got two helmets. i got to wear a helmet every day when I'm teaching skate lessons, so it's nice to be able to switch from one to the other. Um, and I really enjoy both these ones. So this is the anyway um, helmet, the visor helmet with a cool max uh, hat that kind of fits inside, right? If I pull that apart, we can see that it's essentially just a liner shaped like a hat with the brim. The brim, um, I find, doesn't get in your field of vision, but does offer you a little protection from the sun. More of a style choice, really. This one has that crank in the back so you can size it up. And what I've done is gone over some automotive point paint and Put some logos on there, so the classic Shop Task logo in green. And then probably the more comfortable of the two helmets, I do really like this one. This is a triple eight uh, brain saver, sweat saver liner. So a yellow one that I recently painted so I could add some decals on there. Makes it fun. Now this helmet is a softer shell, so offers less in the way of uh, high impact protection, but what it is is super comfortable. The liner can be removed and thrown in the washing machine, which is amazing if you're wearing a helmet a lot. It's really nice to be able to wash that liner. <coughs> and then again, because it's a flexible shell, it's going to last over multiple impacts. So if you're at the skate park, you know, mostly on the pathways, casual skating, a helmet like this is going to be fantastic because it's going to be comfortable. You're not going to mind wearing it. You know, I find Sometimes I don't want to wear my helmet, but once I've had it on for five minutes, I totally forget that I have it on, especially if it's a comfortable helmet, something like this. Like this, anyway, helmet here actually has that more traditional kind of EPS foam, I believe it's called, standard in bike helmets. So this would offer more in the way of a big crash protection. So this would be good for commuting if you're skating around vehicles and that sort of thing. Um, and of course, triple eight offer some good options with that EPS foam as well. Boom, so that's my setup head to toe, right? The setup isn't just what you're wearing on your feet. You gotta feel comfortable head to toe. You know, your pads, your equipment, pants, right? Pants always comes up on inline skating. So, uh, you know, having a pair of pants that moves with you and isn't restrictive, but at the same time offers you some protection as gonna last as you wipe out and fall once in a while is really important, you know, what you're wearing up here, making sure it's not in your field of vision, right? A hood like this one, not so good when I'm looking side to side, especially if I'm skating backwards, it's in my way. So having a hood that's going to stay nice and tight, right? So if you need that hood for warmth or whatever reason, just comfort perhaps, um, but one that's not going to get in your field of vision. And then a helmet that you're actually going to wear is important as well. I bow to you. Thank you for watching.